Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday afternoon, about 1.40 p.m. California time here. November 18, 2024 is the date. Uh, got a little bit of earthquake activity stirring up here at the uh, southern end of the San Andreas Fault, the Brawley Seismic Zone here around the Salton Sea area. Showing a handful of earthquakes here in the last hour. Uh, nothing big, but uh, we are starting to get uh, a little bit of multitude of numbers out here around this area of the plate boundary and of course uh, it's been a little while since we've seen any significant earthquake swarms out here in this region uh, i'd say since our last one we've seen a, a whole bunch of elevated seismic activity out here in southern california in general um, without any swarming down here across the southern end so i'm kind of watching this uh, as always i think any type of swarming uh, along the plate boundary just off the locked area here of the san andreas fault is something to watch pretty closely uh, this may, may not be something, but uh, I definitely want to put this out here that we're noticing a little bit of increasing swarming going on here in the last hour around the Salton Sea area. Again, that's a Brawley seismic zone just shy of the San Andreas Fault, the southern branch here, which is locked. Uh, they like to use that word locked and loaded, right? Uh, because it's pretty much wound up uh, as tight as you can get here, like a spring very capable of producing an 8.1 earthquake. That's uh, very possible here in the future. So uh, a couple earthquakes also around the China Lake area. I see two showing up there. Um, we got some movement up around the Ridgecrest area as well, but really, uh, again, nothing above 2.5, but it is earthquake activity, and it's starting to uh, kick up here in a uh, location that has you know been known for some swarms but again I, any type of swarming around here can be a little suspicious here don't want to see the big one pop eventually it's going to happen we can't push it off uh, for too much longer but i uh, figured i would note that um some movement at the northern end here of the sacramento valley as well 2.0 outside of red bluff up here in the foothills above me but really nothing uh Nothing major going on. Looks like Yellowstone getting a little bit of activity as well in the last hour. 1.7 and a 1.9. So let's go see what's going on in the Yellowstone area real quick. Stand by and pull up that overview. And uh, this here gives us a, a general overview of uh, the layouts here of the seismograph stations around the region. The Yellowstone Caldera super volcano right there in the black uh, oval type line. Uh, Yellowstone Lake right there in the blue. Earthquake activity uh, appears to be popping up here. Let's see. They have it centered just outside the Lake Yellowstone area, 1.7 and a 1.9. That would be this area right here. Uh, I would say there's a little bit more than two earthquakes there. There could potentially be four or five there in that little cluster. We have to go away from that main station to see some of the uh, the readings. There's at least uh, yeah, there's at least four earthquakes there. Looks like maybe a little bit uh, further movement as well following that uh, event. The largest quake, of course, showing up here across uh, uh, the region, and, and it's not going to be a big earthquake, only a 1.9, but still, um, looks like we may be starting a little bit of swarming up here as well in the uh, Yellowstone area. So definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, Texas has been pretty active out here in the oil fields recently. Got another 2.3 here since this morning, uh, since this morning's update out in the oil fields here of Texas. We'll zoom in here and show you guys what's out here. I mean, there's <laughs> there's a lot of money that was made out there, but the, also a lot of uh, a lot of scars left out here on the surface of the earth withdrawing all that uh, precious oil and uh, injecting that whole area down with wastewater. 2.3, literally within feet of uh, what looks like some type of holding tanks out here. Wastewater injection pond down here. Um, and this is actually a very littered area of oil operations. But over the last 30 days here, this region, this specific region, has not uh, seen a lot of earthquake activity. Other areas around Texas? Oh, yeah, look at that. Uh, across Pecos, Texas, up here around Snyder, Midland, 
more recently some warming going on here south of San Antonio and those oil fields. A lot of uh, weather pages out here stating that this is just fault related. <laughs> yeah, okay. It is not fault related. Now, I know obviously there is some fault systems out here, uh, but all these operations have been, uh, um, you know, they, they've been monitored and graphs have been made uh, in relationship to the, uh, the oil boom back in the 80s or so, uh, along with elevated seismic activity. So that's a fact. Now, whether uh, poking holes out here and withdrawing the gas and or the oil and then pumping wastewater back into the ground is activating old faults or not, who knows? Uh, that's also a possibility. But uh, the majority of this, just a sign here of uh, regional stress on the North American uh, plate. Oklahoma's getting hit up there as well across the oil fields. Uh, but I'm noticing this earthquake here, uh, one of the farthest ones here east in this cluster last 30 days um so it may we may start seeing some of these regions that have not been hit yet with earthquake activity the the oil fields um start to come into play in terms of seeing uh new movement new earthquakes and uh, new areas you know because not all of them not all of these oil fields are getting hit at uh, the same time um even though it looks like maybe some may be here in the last 24 hours but uh, eventually that pressure can transfer elsewhere across the state of, uh, Texas out here and hit oil fields that have not been hit. And, uh, there's a good chunk of land out here in the Edwards plateau area. I don't know how much, uh, well, there's not a whole lot of oil fields out here that I can see maybe a couple around this region, but, uh, you know, I got to watch it. looks like you're starting to get a little migration out there of earthquakes towards the southeast or so interesting right about where the uh, oil fields end although there is some more uh back over here it looks like well that's a town i wouldn't doubt if these guys have the oil fields in their in their backyards i remember seeing that when i was out there earlier this year driving through a couple of these smaller towns and uh everyone's got one of those oil pumps in their backyard or even their front yard all right, so we'll continue to watch that. Uh, Southern California there with that swarming stirring up. Got about seven earthquakes here. A couple more coming into the China Lake Station. That's what I'm saying. Things are starting to kick up out here, folks. We'll just uh, stay on guard, be on guard out here. Uh, space weather activity. There's a bunch of inflar activity ramping up here in the last... 24 hours, that's due to a uh, sunspot over here on the eastern limb. Throwing off some long duration flares. So uh, even though that's not a ginormous spot in terms of coverage, it does have a little central core right here uh, that uh, is fairly complex right about in this area. So we'll watch that for some further X flare or uh, further M flare. May see an X flare, you never know uh, the way with this, uh, the way this thing is sizzling with M flares. Uh, and then, of course, we'll cover this and more later on this evening, folks. But uh, stay safe. Got some earthquake activity there. Southern California ramping up. And Yellowstone. Do you have a Yellowstone station up here? Let's see here. I don't. Where'd it go? Okay, so I'll have to add that here. It's pretty important to watch what's going on there in Yellowstone as well. But uh, for now, California definitely kicking up. Again, we'll cover this and more in tonight's update, folks. Stay safe out there. And... Uh, We'll catch you guys back out here in a few hours.